Hey everyone, this is Aaron. I will be taking a vacation, at least from podcasting for a while. I hope you enjoy these rebroadcast episodes from our Hall of Fame archives. Hickory Dickory Dock The mouse ran up the clock The clock struck one The mouse ran down Hickory Dickory Hey, who moved my cheese? What happened to my project? Welcome to the E-Success Methods Podcast with Jacob and Aaron, your source for expert advice on Lean, Six Sigma, and performance improvement methods. In this episode number 51, our first E-Success Methods holiday special, Beware the Lean Six Sigma Project Holiday Blues. Here we go. Hey, Jacob, how you doing? Hello, Adam. How are you doing? Jacob, I am doing great. Jacob, I wanted to wish you a, a happy, happy holiday. Thanks. So you do. What are your plans for the holidays? Well, I'll tell you what I don't plan. I do not plan to do a Lean Six Sigma project. Ooh. <laughs> and I'm really hoping that no, none come up between now and then because it's almost certain death. In my experience, almost certain death for my project, or at least very, very difficult when the holidays come around. You're saying holidays kill projects? Yeah, well, in my experience, it's killed two of them, or at Ooh. least it's significantly uh, impacted the momentum so much that after once after the holidays came back and we were ready to start up again, it became, eh, we're good. We don't need to start up again. Just kind of wrap it up. And you always end up leaving something on the table uh, when that time happens. Hmm. Interesting. So you're saying uh, we... People shouldn't be kicking projects off, let's say, sometime in October or November time frame. They should wait till the beginning of the year to kick a project off. Yeah, that it, that's a, a tough one. You know, there is a rule of thumb where I'm at now that says, you know, you don't really even want to start a project within the second half of the year because there's always something, always some sort of push that's going to essentially remove your resources from you. Uh, hmm. And essentially the attention is going to be diverted to some other last-minute sort of push to, uh, you know, improve the business and how, how the business looks on the books um, and uh, all kinds of other other things that I think we can get into a little bit further. All righty. I'd like to hear more about this one. So there is there may be some belief that people's projects won't have a problem because, you know, it's very important and people think, no way, people won't give up on it. It'll definitely be here when we get back. Yes, we'll all go on vacations. We'll take three weeks here and there between Thanksgiving and Christmas and all the other holidays. And uh, we'll just get back on them when we get back. And I believe that the bigger the project is, the bigger the risk. And the more moving parts you have, the more stakeholders you have to keep contained, and the more people you have to keep the momentum up, the more people you have to involve in keeping this project going the more people you actually have to get back in line after they've taken a week off here, a week off there. And you really have, I've heard the metaphor before, but I think in this case it really does hold true. It's like herding cats. You really have to try to keep all of that together because people, when they get on vacation and they go through the holidays, they are checked out and they are not, they don't have anything to do with your project for at least the time they're gone, plus probably at least 50% of that first couple weeks back. Yeah, I can see that happen. I mean, you know, you people take the time off and then they come back and then they spend the first few days catching up on emails that they didn't get to and things like that. So they just don't have the time to focus or the amount of resources or time to dedicate towards the the critical two project, which because it's been off for a while, it's more like, yeah, a couple more weeks, not going to hurt this. We'll get back to it when we can get to it. You know, that mentality comes into play. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there's some places actually don't get very much holiday or vacation time, so they're like, oh, you know, it's not really an issue. But there is, it may not be holidays, it may not be vacation, but there's also what I alluded to before, that's the end of year rush. Maybe this is your salespeople saying, no, I can't concentrate on your project now, we have an end of the year push, it's all hands on deck, we got to get these sales going. Or, I can't do your project now, we have a travel restriction, it's the end of the year, everybody's watching their budget, and also... Even if they're not getting vacation time off, let's be honest, 
Cyber Monday is called Cyber Monday for a reason. It's because nobody's doing anything on Cyber Monday except for buying things online. So the attention to work during this holiday season, even if you're at work, is often split between the stresses of home, stresses of the holiday, and the stresses essentially to have a good holiday. Wow, you're going to get a lot of people in trouble, Aaron. You're saying people are shopping while they're supposed to be working? Hey, I didn't make up the statistics. I just cited them. All right. I'd like to see the source for this citation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Amazon has those da- those data. <laughs> data sitting somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> What's the IP address for this order? I, I'm sure I'm sure many, many companies are seeing their uh, their internet slow down. <laughs> uh, especially during during just before lunch and just after lunch. I, I can imagine that. Anyway, let's talk about uh, what the holidays uh, mean here. At least in the U.S., typically in the weeks between Thanksgiving, which is, I think it's the third Thursday of November usually. Last or, Thursday of always, November. Always. Oh, last Thursday of November. Okay. Yep. Uh, anytime between that and New Year's, there's usually quite a bit of, I'd just say, not a lot going on in a lot of the company, at least a lot of the companies that I've worked at. And people take holidays, the all the vacations that they hadn't taken during the uh, early part of the year. They ch- kind of try to fill that in. Say, oh, you know, if I don't use it, I lose it. So often, the last two weeks in December, you get nobody, and frankly, the last week in November, you get nobody. And there's only like one or two weeks in December we actually can get something done. But to be honest, those are those are pretty split. Those aren't really terribly effective times. No, and you know, and and let's be honest. In that time, also is where most of the companies who have performance reviews or evaluations and goal settings for the next year, they start kicking into gears to try to see, okay, let's finish off that. Let's have the one-on-one talks and you know things of that sort to get mm-hmm. done. So, uh, probably even I would say for senior leadership, even starting say October, November, with the whole budgeting cycle coming into play. Um, you start losing momentum, you start losing attention for some of the leaders, you know, say, I would say last quarter of the year. Mm -hmm. So that's about, you know, I think the, the core team, let's say who are working on it, you might start from the time frame you mentioned the say mid November till end of the year. But I would even say with some of the stakeholders, the interest will start waning down. I would say last quarter, I wouldn't say waning down. It's more, they have other distractions that they need their attention. That's more critical than maybe this project that they're working on. Absolutely, the the uh, the higher ups are totally interested in making sure their the the numbers hit. They hit their numbers. Uh, people are worried about oh, am I gonna are we gonna hit our bonus targets? Um, people are um, also looking at reducing uh, inventory and and doing all kinds of different things in order to have the end of the year numbers look as good as possible. And anything that's really proactive, which your job your your project should be um, fairly strategic. A lot of strategic things kind of get thrown to the wind during this time. And that, that itself has nothing to do with the holidays. That's just the human nature of, oh, hurry up. It's coming. Let's get as, let's make this look as good as possible. Yep, yep, yep. So I had one, one big project uh, person, from my personal experience where it was interrupted by the holidays. And this was kind of my first experience with this. And uh, the internal priorities uh, kind of, went away for some small short-term gain. So they started doing these mini Kaizen blitzes and, and kind of ignored the, the larger project we were working on. So we took a pause out. They said, hey, we need some time in November. It's like, okay, you know, this makes sense after after Thanksgiving. And then it was like, okay, let's have us come back in. Let's have us come back in. And then the months and weeks just rolled around. It was like, no, we're, we decided we're just going to stop. And never really got to the final you know, imp- through fully imp- through improved phase uh, in this particular project, then you just had to say, okay, I, I guess that's the end. And it was uh, really anticlimactic, and I, I firmly believe it had a lot to do with the holiday interruption of just kind of killing the momentum. Are, are you completely saying it was the holidays, or was it the fact that you probably showed some success and then there was some other bigger fish that everybody's attention went to and they said, you know what, this is not as big a problem now. You've kind of, you know, toned down the critical aspect of this being a big, big issue. Now that you've curbed that, let's work on something else that might be more prominent or as a more of a bigger issue today. Yeah, well, there there was always a bigger issue. There was, um, we did stop the bleeding and mm-hmm. brought it, we brought it from, 
uh, like probably um, twenty thousand dollars of scrap a day to maybe thirteen thousand dollars of scrap a day, which is still pretty significant. Um, the goal was to bring it down well below ten, so we never really got to that goal, or well below six thousand a day. Never really got to that goal. So, um, but they kind of just said, eh, "We've made it as far as we're okay with this right now. Um, let us let us get back and do our own thing." And part of that is being an outsider, being an outside consultant, where um, the particular business relationship did not, they didn't have much more, other than wanting to improve internally, they didn't have much more incentive to keep the project going. And, and honestly, they were all about the short term because they ended up they ended up um, being acquired not too long after that. So it was it was coincidental with the holidays, but um, the holidays definitely made it easier f- to let the momentum die. Got it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I can relate to something like that in one of the other projects that I've worked on. Again, uh, you know, you everything's going great you know you kind of reach the point where the holidays have come and we've you know you've hit the goal you, you're not you've not hit the goal let's say you're you're we were aiming for i think a 97 percent or 98 percent accuracy for some of the uh, processing work that we were doing you know over time we've got to that 95 we've got to the 96 and you know we could have done a little bit more work but it reached a point where we felt like you know what we're good with this for now you know if yeah, we, you know, is it really going to get us mm-hmm. over the hump to get that and be proud of that 98? Absolutely. But we'll have to probably spend another couple of, couple of weeks, couple of months of work. Let's, let's, you know, let's call it done. We're good with this. Let's move on. You know, that sort of a mentality comes into play. Well, and in the question you have to ask, I guess, is, is, is that level that maybe it would have been easier to hit that with the momentum you had, but now that you are pretty much lost the momentum, is it worth the startup costs? You know, the, to get the momentum back going, is that last two percent worth that? Or, exactly. And you know, in some cases, really you you can let, you know let it go. It, it, a lot of it comes to the ownership of the team. Also, if the if the if the team, the process owner, they're part of the team and mm-hmm. they still feel, you know, proud or energetic enough that you know I want to push this over the hump. That's a different story. It's when it's when the stakeholders and the others also say, "Don't waste your time on this. Move on." Mm-hmm. That's when things change or things need to change. Absolutely, yeah. When yeah, when the winds winds uh, yep, winds of change blow. When everything shifts direction, yeah, uh, your your stakeholders will let you know, um, you know, whether or not they're interested anymore, and and that's a good signal too. Hey, we may not have hit our goal, but uh, let's wrap this up where we are. And I actually had to do that for another project, which was interrupted by the holidays. And the same end of year rush, and the same, hey, we have uh, these things to do. Oh, it turned out that the client couldn't be quote unquote distracted with the project and needed to focus on their other projects. Interestingly enough, and um, you know, I pushed and pushed to at least have a face in the plant and at least just have it not die because I knew I knew that the the holidays could really could really kill this so um, it didn't kill it altogether but it, it did require a significant cut in the scope whereas before when we started everything off we were looking at essentially kicking off projects in the entire plant uh, different four different uh, departments and it really ended up getting cut back to just wrapping up the one department we were in and putting a nice bow on it uh, based on what we had and not really uh, going any further, so we we left a lot of money on the table there, but um, I guess in the end, both companies were happy with it. It was just uh, probably me as the project manager that felt like, eh, mm-hmm. this wasn't really a success, even though on the books it was. That's just a little bit about that. So what about that's just the Western holidays, or at least that's the U.S. holidays, uh, eating up November and December. What globally, there's all kinds of different holidays and different cultures and and you're more of a, I'd say more an international fellow than I am um what do you know about the the chinese holidays and and some of the other holidays around the world yeah so you know in in china especially we have a big operation based out in in that area and they have the basically i would say from mid gen so all during the U.S., you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas, they are completely functional. They are up and running, no issues whatsoever. 
but their holiday season starts specifically in around the Chinese New Year, mm. which is, you know, I think the first or second week of February, but people are on vacation almost from like third to fourth week of January till the end of the the Chinese New Year celebration, which can go all the way up to mid-February. And they oh, wow. stagger, mm-hmm. they stagger that along. So that's their big vacation over there. Um, they also have something called a spring festival. I forget when that is. That is also a big event for them. Most of the people take vacation, go back to their hometowns and do those kind of work. So that's also a big vacation season for them. Okay. So, you know, I think where we've been lucky uh, in the U.S. Uh, because we partner a lot with our Shenzhen operations team or China operations team to work on that is that when the U.S. is on holiday, the China, you know, they are completely up and running and active in the flow of things. So mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the work they've been able to take over. So we kind of divide the work, you know, most of the cases because of the operations being done in China, mm-hmm. the the project leader in many cases are is from there. Or if not, we have a equivalent project leaderish role that is even if the project leader is based in the U.S., uh, to have somebody representing from there to kind of coordinate the activities in that operation there. So we are able to delegate some of the responsibilities and mm-hmm. some of the U.S. folks are able to join them by phone or, you know, maybe not entirely take ownership of the entire thing, but at least participate in some of the activities so that the momentum still keeps going. And similarly, on the other end, when the Chinese New Year or those holidays come into play, the U.S. is now fully in functional and inflow. Yes, a lot of the day-to-day work has to be picked up by the U.S. team. Mm -hmm. So they also get a flavor on, okay, what are these folks really seeing? And when they come back from vacation, it's actually a good experience for everybody to have almost like a retrospective. This is what we saw. And, you know, these are some of the other challenges we need to work on. How can we work on this together? So... So Go ahead. So I was just going to say, that's kind of interesting. So it, had you not done that sort of transition, mm-hmm. the say the project manager was in the U.S. and, and it was an international project, you, you would have been uh, really in a difficult place from starting the end of November all the way through to the end of February. Pretty much, yes. The, not, the, we probably would not have seen any action mm-hmm. in that project. Mm-hmm. You are listening to E6S Methods Podcast, brought to you by E6S Industries. Join us on our website at www.e6s-methods.com. Journey through success. Did you know E6S Industries delivers custom training? We'll customize a program to meet your unique continuous improvement needs. We're also experienced keynote and motivational speakers to professional organizations and universities. Contact us on our website, www.esuccess-methods.com, and let us help you chart your journey through success. You know, so that's a big holiday season, I would say, for us specifically. You know, India is another area where we have operations. I think the holidays in India are staggered throughout the year. They don't have a big chunk of vacation that people take all in one go. Mm-hmm. I think depending on region to region, uh, holidays vary a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people take vacations other than that. I don't see a big seasonal sort of a holiday that most companies take. There's some sections where, you know, Diwali is a big holiday in India, which is predominant in, across most of North India. Mm-hmm. And you might see people take a week off, but nothing more than that. Okay. I think uh, South America, I think the carnival in Brazil is a big thing. From what I've heard, never I've seen a lot on TV, never been there, but that's definitely a holiday. Uh, mm-hmm. We have to be worried about if you have operations there. Europe is the other area, which I would say, you know, maybe out of jealousy, uh, they <laughs> seem to have a lot of holidays <laughs> or vacation season, I should say. You know, the whole of summer, trying to find somebody in Europe to get anything done is pretty much impossible. And maybe it's not Thanksgiving onwards, but definitely mid-December to about mid-January. It's very hard to find anybody in Europe. I, so I, will I don't say, know if you have the experience. I will, I will say for any American who complains about the European vacation schedule and holiday schedule, it's definitely completely out of envy and jealousy. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's because uh, uh, if we had that, if we had that, we would definitely take it. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I don't know if that's a challenge, but again, I think in general, it's just the culture in Europe 
or most of Europe that I've encountered with, mm-hmm. they just accept that those are times people need off or people team time off and you're not going to get anything done. They've accepted as as a culture. It's just the international organizations that work with them need to be acknowledging that and find ways around that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, really, if you think about it, these depending on how your projects are running, you pretty much have all year round or maybe just a couple months where everybody's uh, on deck, uh, really, really rearing to go. So you always have some sort of contingency all year round where you're going to have to be prepared for these certain types of risks where there's vacations, there's holidays, uh, and uh, yeah, it's just something you got to be prepared for. What are you going to do for all these things? What are what are the options that people have? Since you're the one who's encountering most of this, you have well, any suggestions? I've encountered it twice, and, and frankly, I think you've encountered it as well, but you have encountered it uh, in a place where actually people did make these uh, these different contingency plans. Actually, getting back to yours, um, your contingency plan. So you had the delegation the delegation going on between the U.S. and China to make sure things didn't just die on the vine mm-hmm. during each other's ho- different holidays. Yep. Um, there must be some sort of uh, – of it must lose a little bit of momentum in the transition or the getting people back up to speed and, and the handoff. Definitely. I mean, that happens a little bit. I think, you know, that's inevitable. You're going to lose some sort of momentum in that aspect. Mm-hmm. Uh, but most of the work or the analysis or the analytics that needs to get done can still continue to get done while people are on vacation or not mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's something we stress a lot. And I think a part of it is also, you know, kind of for mo- for pretty much every project we do, we encourage the team to kind of do a, a very detailed racy. Yes. Our responsibilities and accountability concepts. Mm-hmm. And we make sure that pretty much people from the different regions are all at least accountable for most of the work. And that's something, you know, ec- that acknowledgement exists early in advance, which mm-hmm. kind of helps uh, people be clear on this is something that I need to definitely be contributing and making a success. So, you know, it's maybe it's not necessarily part of their goal sheet, but it's definitely something they're aware that this is something they're going to get judged on or, mm-hmm. you know, reported on or something. Okay. So that's something is very, very... We kind of make sure, and that's the other thing. We don't have a whole lot of projects, or we try not to have multiple projects for the same team all at the same time. Oh, well, absolutely. That makes sense. So so from that aspect, it's very clear, right? It's on their goals that we want you to help complete this project done, or we want to make sure you're leading the charge on this. So that's very clearly spelled out in some of the goal sheets also for the year. So it's, which, not, a, it's not a question of, hey, which project is more important and which one should I work on now? Exactly. Okay. So that's also kind of spelled out pretty much clearly for the most sakes and one of the one of the big things uh, or big advantages that i've seen in the organization i'm with now is we're very flexible uh, you know we kind of set our goal sheets say in the beginning of the year but we kind of every quarter with most of the teams review it to make sure everybody's still on track or is on the same direction and if mm-hmm. we have to make slight changes or small modifications to those we are very open to getting that done so what level of cross training is necessary for this kind of thing i mean it, uh um, is this something that doesn't require a lot of analysis? Is it more just do it sort of delegation or are we delegating facilitation of tools or what, what kind of describe so, the delegation? Yeah. I mean, uh, so we have only one standard training across our organization. There's no different levels, say for a green belt, a black belt or anything of that sort. Everybody's trained on the same material. Everybody's trained on the same tools. Okay. Everybody's familiarity with the tools are at least from training aspect, the same it's standardized. The only difference is somebody who's used the tool multiple times is feeling more confident than somebody who's not used it as much. Okay, okay. So from that aspect, uh, you know, pretty much anybody and everybody should be able to utilize the tools very easily. Mm-hmm. We, we've tried to keep things simple, not teaching any great regression or hypothesis testing sort of concepts. We, we've really scoped it down to make it applicable. Most of the tools we use are lean value stream mapping based activities mm-hmm. uh, so from from those concepts it's again easy intuitive for anybody to pick it up mm-hmm. so that's kind of how so those kind of things you know it's not really hard to transition it's again the ownership or the accountability that gets translated back and forth and then it's more about hey this is these are the things we found these are the things we've done do you folks agree you know it could be done over a couple of emails or a quick phone call and we can keep moving on with that with the project direction so tell me about how you handle, because I imagine 
so part of the risks in these is you're keeping you know, your sort of your stakeholders in the dark for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with that? <laughs> the that that's the challenge, right? I mean, at, at some point, you're not going to get the stakeholders in a face to face sort of a discussion to say this is where the progress is. You're just keeping your fingers crossed and hoping that they read your email that's coming through or, mm -hmm. you know, the project leader who is sending the summary or the notes up is going there and hopefully maybe trying to get some one-on-one some -on -one time with the stakeholder. If not, it's just crossing your fingers and hoping that once the stakeholder reads it two months later, nothing's too crazy or we haven't gone completely off tangent for that. I mean, the champion's always involved. So that's something we make sure that the champion is within understanding of where the progress is and how things are, you know, that discussion goes on. The other stakeholders sometimes, mm -hmm. it can, I, I have seen not too many, but, you know, where, well, we shouldn't have really gone down that path. We should have done something else because we, it took a little while for that stakeholder to come back. Sure. Okay. All right. So, yeah, that, that's a, that sounds like a very almost, almost world-class approach. Um, so if you find yourself, you are in a situation, what do you do if the holidays are approaching? Well, here's what you can do if you've actually got time to plan it out. Say you're starting a project now. Well, first of all, if you're starting a project now, don't go beyond define. You don't really get into the details until uh, you get into the new year or at least get past these, these uh, whatever yeah. holidays are in your region. I, I, would, I would concur. I would basically say use this as the scoping section for your project to maybe determine the scope, you know, what are the things that's necessary for this and don't kick it off further than that. Mm -hmm. Wait for after the holidays to dive deep into it and see how much of this is really the issue that we need to right. solve for. And if you happen to be starting a project that is, say, six months before the holidays, which would be approximately June here, um, choose your resources wisely because you also have vacation season during that. Choose your resources, the ones that will pretty much be available uh, with minimal interruption, you know, as as is reasonable. Um, you can't expect that everybody will be always around. But uh, those that already have very large vacations planned and they're taking a full two weeks uh, during a critical time, if you have that information up front and they're not maybe a critical a subject matter expert or process owner, maybe that's not the right project uh, team member. Uh, and consider that when you're choosing your team uh, and your resources. But also, more importantly, is scope it scope it appropriately scope it and budget your projects so that it can be done before you get into this this uh time mid november you start it in june and we we talk about this a lot already you know we want to have a project done in 45 days so if you're starting off in june really you want to be wrapping it up completely by say mid november um for the american holidays but what if it's already too late and the holidays are approaching and you're in the middle, you're stuck maybe in measure or analyze phase of your project? What do you think then? I mean, I would definitely highlight the key things that need to be solved for. Mm -hmm. You know, these are, you know, kind of like the other project we're talking about, right? You had a 20,000 scrap rate happening daily. Your goal was 10,000 or 5,000, but let's at least get it to 10,000 for now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, what are the things that can get us there? What are the quick things that can get there? Try to get to that point. So at least it's almost like you've got there. Or you've you've got through most of it. Mm -hmm. You know, the other aspect, if, there, if it's possible, I don't think how easy this is going to be, is if you can actually somehow shrink the scope. Right. If you can change the aspect, you know, I don't want to solve the entire world, but let me solve for North America. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can change that and if that's still applicable absolutely do that and then at least you can you can highlight that this made an improvement here then it's more of a case of okay how do we translate this to the other regions or to the other sections right if you are in a situation where the holidays are approaching and it's it's imminent that you are not going to get all of your team members in the same meeting all at the same time because of however people are taking different time off it it's a good clue for you to say hey you know there may be a significant risk here. I might be losing momentum. Let me find that reasonable pause point where all is not lost if this project goes away. So what's the new scope? What can I lock in now so that we don't lose where we are? Um, and if I never pick it back up again, we're still far better than we were before. But also, 
keep the pressure on your team members and your stakeholders. Now, you might not get all of them in the room at, at the same time or on a single meeting at the same time. That just means you have to do extra work to maintain communications between all these different groups because now all you're the bridge for all these different types of information. So it's actually going to be more work on you as the project leader during this time. Absolutely. And if you are fortunate, just like uh, Jacob mentioned in his group, enlist some substitute resources who will be more available. And it's possible that if this is a long time frame, these people may become some new permanent resources for your team if they are fulfilling that role correctly. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't think we substitute people in and out, mm -hmm. um, but in some cases you do. You know, you know, the subject matter expert, if there's a role specifically that we need in that project team and the subject matter expert cannot be there, we basically then say, okay, going forward, here's a sub for our subject matter expert. He or she is going to fill the role for that. Mm -hmm. All right, so as we head into the holidays, we are just coming out of Thanksgiving here in the U.S. and staring down the barrel of New Year's where essentially it's kind of a culture in a lot of different companies where not a whole heck of a lot gets done. There's a lot of distractions and there's certainly a lot of uh, reasons to pull away from a project just to do some last-minute business things, some last-minute personal things, get that vacation in uh, before the end of the year, before you lose it. So there's a lot of things that are out there that are pulling your resources away from a Lean Six Sigma project. Now, if you find yourself you're in this situation, now is a good time to take a look, look at the risks of, of failure. What happens if you lose your momentum now? If something does happen, can you find a good pause point in order to lock in whatever gains you have currently gotten or is this a good time to pause and say let's regroup after the new year if you have an international project you run the risk of having essentially anywhere from six months to eight months of similar downtime because we all have different holidays we all have different uh, cultural norms um, so so a couple things you can do is to look at where your projects are understand what the risks are Keep the pressure on your stakeholders and your team members, and where possible, you may need to enlist some substitute resources in order to uh, keep your project momentum going. I have had two projects that have left a lot of money left on the table as a direct result of being losing momentum over the holidays. Yes, there were some other situations of that, but uh, that is my personal experience, and I believe strongly believe that any project should be wrapped up before the holidays come around. Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Jacob, you got anything else to add? No, no, that's that's perfect. I think you summarized it well. All right. Well, thank you, Jacob. All right, Aaron. Nice talking to you. And since it's the holidays, happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays to everyone. Wherever you are, enjoy your holiday. Peace on Earth. There you go. Thanks for listening to episode 51 of the E6S Methods podcast. Stay tuned for episode number 52, a very special anniversary episode. We recap the last year and look forward to starting off an exciting new year. If you would like to be a guest on the eSuccess Method podcast, contact us through our website. Follow us on Twitter at eSuccess Industries or join a discussion on LinkedIn. Subscribe to past and future episodes on iTunes or stream us live on demand with Stitcher Radio. Find outlines and graphics for all shows and more at www.e6s-methods.com. Journey through success.